get started, as always, if there's any props that you want. So if you need any like pillows or if you have yoga props, yoga blocks, or a blanket just to kind of help support your practice this morning. Just make sure that's nearby. Even if you're not sure if you need it this morning, it's always better to just have it next to you. Um, so we're gonna get started in a comfortable seat. So you can sit right onto the floor or you can prop yourself up on a pillow or a blanket to just give yourself a little bit of elevation. And your legs can be crossed or they can be out in front of you. If it's not comfortable to hold the cross, you are welcome to keep them out in front of you. And also wherever you decide to start, because we're going to hold here for a few moments, you don't have to stay. So if we're here for a little bit and you're starting to get uncomfortable or feel any pain anywhere, please adjust as you need. So just starting to settle into the space, into your body this morning. I definitely just woke up too. So I got a little cricks and cracks from sleep last night. So if you need a little bit of movement to just kind of help you tune in with the body this morning, go for it. It's your practice. So if I don't offer something and you your body feels like it wants to go somewhere, please take it. Or if I offer something and your body's not feeling that this morning, please feel free to ignore me. <clears throat> if it feels okay, you can close your eyes or soften your gaze. And just start to feel the shoulders release away from the ears, creating a little bit of space for your neck. Maybe softening through the jaw. And the muscles of the face. Feeling like you're trying to grow the spine nice and tall. But it's okay to soften into that just a little bit. So what I mean is just kind of feeling that length, but don't feel like you've got yourself um gotta have to sit up really straight and tall and hold that if you need to soften into it a little bit please find it and just start to tune in with your breath <coughs> feel the air move in and out of your body Tuning in with your body this morning, just checking in, inviting a little bit of curiosity, creating a little bit of awareness, trying to remove any judgment. a couple more rounds of breath here just settling in if it feels okay you can feel the breath lengthen and get more powerful but it's more important just finding that intention behind the breath so finding that purposeful inhale and exhale Couple more here. <clears throat> Last one. <clears throat> If you've got that cross of the legs, just go ahead and switch the cross. So it's probably going to feel a little awkward. If you have your legs out in front of you, maybe just give them a little wiggle. You can always shift if you want to come into a cross. We're just kind of adding a little bit of movement in there so that they don't fall asleep. 
And then let your arms come by your side. And feel like you've got a string at the top of your head and it's gently trying to lengthen and reach towards the ceiling and growing the spine nice and tall. And as you inhale, just start to reach the arms all the way up to the sky, trying to create a little bit of space in the rib cage. Feel like you're really reaching the hands and then release the arms all the way down. Inhale to reach the arms all the way up, stretch it nice and tall. And exhale to push the arms all the way back down. Let's do one more inhale, reach the arms all the way up. And then release the arms down. Roll the shoulders, just adding a little bit of motion in the shoulders. Feel like you're moving the shoulder blades. Almost like the ears, um, the shoulders are coming up towards your ears like earrings and then releasing down. And then start to reach the arms all the way back up to the sky, just like we did a few moments ago, but this time you're going to add a twist. So start to twist over to the right. So you can bring the left hand or the right hand behind you like a kickstand and start to reach the left hand over to the right leg. So it might find the knee, it might stay on the shin but I want you to focus on lengthening through the spine. So constantly finding that length and then almost pretend like your spine is a wet towel and you're gently trying to rinse the water out. If it feels okay, you can bring your gaze over your right shoulder, totally up to you. Reconnect with your breath. So if you feel like it's more challenging to breathe, maybe untwist just a little bit. <clears throat> Just one more. <clears throat> Inhale, untwist, reach the arms all the way up to the sky, and then twist over to the other side. <clears throat> so the sides will likely feel a little bit different. <clears throat> Keep lengthening through the spine. And feeling like you're rinsing out even just a little bit. Doesn't matter where that hand reaches, that's towards the front. Just use it to kind of help guide the rotation. If it feels okay on your neck, you can bring your gaze over your left shoulder. One more breath. Inhale, untwist, reach the arms all the way up to the sky and then release the arms down. A little roll of the shoulders. And then reach the arms up to the side. So like you're making a T with the arms and then bring the arms forward and feel like you're trying to pull the shoulder blades apart. So it almost feels like a cat pose, but the arms are lifting and reaching forward. And you can always bring the arms down to the ground if it's too much to keep them lifted. And really feel like you're trying to pull the shoulder blades apart and almost like someone is gently pressing your belly in. So you're really rounding through the back body. And then start to find that cow version. So pull the elbows back, squeeze the shoulder blades together and maybe gaze up. So this time trying to find some opening through the front body and your hands can always be at your knees for this. If your arms feel okay staying lifted, you can use the arms to help guide the movement and then reach the arms forward, round the spine, pull the shoulder blades apart. <clears throat> and then pull the elbows back, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Just one more, reach the arms forward, round the spine. 
And then pull the arms back, squeeze the shoulder blades together. So you're gonna reach the arms forward one more time, but you're not gonna round the spine. So just feeling like you're trying to reach the arms in front of you to pick up a puppy. And then give yourself a big hug. So it doesn't matter if the hands actually reach the shoulders, that big hug can have the elbows down a little bit, but I want you to feel like you're trying to create just a little bit of space between the shoulder blades, but you're still sitting tall through the spine. So I'm feeling like I'm trying to pull my shoulder blades and just spread them across my back. Just one more breath. It's gonna be a very subtle movement. You may feel sensation, you may not. And then unwrap the arms and then just switch the arm that was on top. Probably going for whatever the awkward one is. And again, you're just feeling like you're trying to gently pull the shoulder blades apart and really creating some extra space right around the spine in that upper back. Just one more breath. All right, unwrap the arms, release the arms down. If the legs are crossed, uncross them. They've been crossed for a minute, so just make sure the feet are awake. So you can do a little wiggle, a little roll of the toes. <clears throat> We're gonna stay seated for one more pose. So if you need to kind of adjust the hips a little bit, I know we've been sitting for a while, feel free to do that. If you have something that you wanna sit on, you can add it. If you've been sitting on something and it's not comfortable anymore, you can always remove it. If you're not sure, you can play with bringing it in or pulling it out and then see how it feels. So you're gonna come into a bit of a wider stance. So it doesn't matter how wide the wide is, but I want you to think a little wide with the legs. And then just flex into the feet. So as you flex into the feet, you're almost feeling like the toes are trying to pull up to the sky. And then start to rotate towards the right leg. So you don't have to get all the way there. You can always adjust the width. If you want to feel like the heart is reaching more towards the toes, you can always bring the leg in a little bit. But what I really want you to do here is feel a little bit of a rotation towards the right, but then I want you to walk the left hand towards the left leg. And that right hand might come up overhead. If it feels okay on your shoulder, you can always keep the hand at your hip. But I want you to feel like you're trying to create a little bit of space in the right side body, but you've also got a little bit of a rotation. So as you're coming into that side bend, you're also feeling like the heart is gently trying to turn up to the sky. Just a couple of breaths here. The last one. Come all the way back up. Untwist. You might feel a little offside, so the way that we're going to fix that is by going to the other side. <clears throat> so rotate towards the left. The sides are going to feel different. Your mobility going, rotating to the right is going to be different than the left, and that's totally fine. <clears throat> so then you're facing the left side, but you're going to lean to the right so you can stretch and reach through the left side of your body. <clears throat> And again, your arm can be up overhead if that feels okay, or you can bring the hand to your hip. Maybe that right hand is on the ground or you can also just rest it on the leg, or if you've got a pillow nearby, you can rest it on that. So getting a little bit of a side stretch, but it's also got a bit of a rotation, like you're trying to open the heart up towards the sky. Just a couple of breaths here. Last one. 
And then come all the way back up, untwist. If there's any kind of wiggles you need to rinse out, go for it. Give your legs a little shake. And then you'll start to make your way into a tabletop position onto your hands and your knees. So if you need anything on the way there, go for it. And when we get there, we'll take a couple of cat cows and they can be our traditional cat cows or you can add a little bit of a side stretch. Really just as you arrive into that tabletop, finding whatever you need. <laughs> Using your breath to guide you a few more rounds. So then you'll start to come back into your tabletop position and just start to press your hips towards your heels for a child's pose. So you can slide something underneath your belly. You can slide something behind your knees. If it feels okay, you can bring the head all the way down. I'm just keeping my head lifted if you're looking at me so you can hear me. And you know that if child's pose is not a comfortable place to pause, you can find anything else. We're just gonna be over a couple of breaths, just using it as a pause after sitting. Just feeling some of the pressure release off of the lower back from that seated position. One more. You start to pull yourself back up to that tabletop position. <coughs> and extend just your right leg back. Keep the toes hooked under. Find a little bit of balance in the hands. If it's ever too much to be on your hands, you can also lower down onto your forearms, but you're still just trying to find that equal balance from your left to your right. <coughs> and then if it feels okay, start to lift the leg up. Let it float up off the floor and notice how that shifts your balance. It's much harder to just pause here than it is to move. So just take a couple of breaths. And then release the knee all the way down. Extend the left leg back, keep the toes curled under. Find the balance between the left and the right. <laughs> Lift the leg up, let it float. It doesn't matter where it lands for the float, but just start to notice how your balance shifts and see if you can feel everything kind of hug back to center. Really hugging in through your belly button. Use your breath. Again, it's much harder to pause than it is to move. One more. <clears throat> Release the knee all the way down. Let's take a cat cow here. Just one for good luck. And then start to shift the weight into your left hand and you're going to reach the right arm up to the sky and almost feel like you're trying to open the right heart, uh, the right heart, the heart open to the right side. And then thread the arm through the left side, bringing the right shoulder to the ground. 
You can walk the left hand forward, or you can just kind of keep it planted on the ground. You're trying to keep your hips over your knees, but if it's too much in the lower back, you can always keep that thread and just press the hips back a little bit. I care more about the thread of the arm and the rotation than I do in the back bend here. One more breath. Press yourself up, unthread the arm. If you want a little bit of that opening, again, you can do that and then bring the hand down. And we'll come right into the second side. So you'll shift the weight into your right hand, reach the left arm up, thread it underneath the right. You can walk the right hand forward. Again, your hips can stay high or you can press your hips closer to your heels. A couple more breaths. Just start to press yourself up on thread. If you want a little opening, go for it. Release the hand down. You're welcome to find a little cat cow here. And then just start to make your way all the way onto your belly. So you can just kind of roll your way down. You can make a pillow with the hands. Maybe rock the hips a little bit from side to side. Again, your head can come down. If you're looking at me, mine is just lifted so you can hear me. And just take a pause when you get to your belly. Full of breaths here. I'm just finding that pause. And then start to press yourself up onto your forearms, coming into your sphinx pose. So feel like your shoulder blades are trying to pull together. Press up the forearms into the ground like you're trying to lift the heart away from the floor. Your elbows are about underneath your shoulders, but they can also be a little ahead of your shoulders. Gaze wherever is comfortable on your neck. So maybe that's all the way in front. Maybe that's to your thumbs. Or maybe that's just releasing the head completely. <laughs> and 
And then just start to bend the right leg. So start to kick the heel towards the butt. And almost feel like you're trying to push the knee more towards the back of your mat. Your leg cramped up like mine did. <laughs> you can just kind of release it and take a couple of breaths. <clears throat> and you can stay with just kind of this hold of letting the foot float, or you can kind of kickstand your left forearm and reach your right hand for the top of the right foot. So now when you go back to reach it, you're going to likely open up the right side, but I want you to then see if you can square the shoulder back to the ground. And you can feel like you're trying to pull the heel in or kick the foot away. Sometimes, especially in the first part of half of class, I like to just do a little bit of both. Just one more breath. We're not here for very long. Gently release the foot. Let's lower all the way down before we come to the other side. And when you're ready, start to bring yourself back into that sphinx pose up on your forearms. Bend your left leg, kick your heel towards your butt. And again, almost feel like you're trying to push the knee away from your body. And then you can stay here or maybe start to kickstand the right arm and reach the left hand for the top of the left foot. Feel like you're trying to bring the shoulders back square. Again, you can feel like you're pulling the heel in or kicking the foot away or maybe somewhere in the middle or maybe just kind of move in both. Just one more breath. Gently release, lower all the way down. <coughs> now let's give yourself a little rock of the hips. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. This is always the hardest part. Press yourself up. Come back towards your tabletop. Let's find a couple of cat cows just to help neutralize the spine. So it can also just be kind of a little bit of movement. And then you can stay in your tabletop or curl the toes under and press your hips up and back for your downward dog. So if you come to your down dog, you can always pedal out the feet when you get there. <clears throat> if being in that more inverted state, which you are in an inversion technically in a down dog because your heart is above your head, stay in tabletop, please.
So if you're in that down dog, you're going to start to walk your hands and your feet towards each other, landing somewhere in the middle of your mat. If you're in a tabletop, you can step one foot forward and then the other foot forward and come more towards this halfway lift. If you've taken class with me before, I definitely, I've offered this many times. Actually, let's all come here. So if you walk to your mat into the middle of the mat, just find a little bend into your knees, feel like the booty's pressing back. You can bring your hands to the tops of your knees. And then just press into the feet, rise all the way up to stand. Take a moment when you get there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just really feel the feet root onto the ground. Maybe you do a little sway. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Reconnect with your breath. Your eyes can be open or closed. Totally up to you. Just one more breath. So you can set yourself up near a wall. You know, you always can find a wall or a chair um, or something if you want to have a little bit of extra support for our balance. <coughs> and you're going to just shift the weight into your left foot and kick your right heel towards your butt. So we were just on our belly and we did this. It's the same thing, except this time we're balancing on one foot instead of on the ground. And just like we did on the ground, you have the option to reach for the foot. No, it's going to be feel like a longer reach standing. You can always hold on if you have pants on. You can always hold on to your pant leg. Or just like we did on the ground, you can always just kind of let it float. And just like before, if you were kind of feeling a little cramp in the back of the leg, you can come in and out of it and relax it. The cramp comes from when we kick the heel to the butt, especially if we're not holding onto it, we're activating all those hamstring muscles. And we often feel how tight the backs of our legs are, but they're also a little weak most of the time. So that cramp just happens because we're activating Something we don't activate a lot. If it feels okay in your balance and you want to reach the left arm up to the sky, go for it. So you're a dancer. And if you're feeling really good and want to add a little bit more, maybe start to kick the foot into the hand. And you almost feel like you're leaning a little bit up forward. So it's going to play with your balance more. You can always start, see how it feels, and bring yourself back. Just a couple of breaths. I know you've already been balancing for a while. One more. Gently release. Pause for a moment. Maybe notice the difference in your sides and how they're feeling. And then if you want to have the wall next to you or something next to you and you just kind of need to rotate to the other way, go for it. So you're holding on, on a good side. So you're going to shift into your right foot. The left heel kicks to your bottom. <coughs> Again, it can stay here and float. Or you can reach for the top of the foot. Know that the sides are going to feel different. 
That's totally fine. If you're feeling okay and you want to add a little bit more, maybe reach the right arm up to the sky, it's okay to be a little wobbly. And then maybe you want to play with kicking the foot into the hand and almost feeling a little bit more of a lean forward. Your sides are going to feel totally different. <coughs> Again, I know we've been here for a bit, so just one more breath. Gently release, pause for a moment. If you need any wiggles, take it. Reach the arms all the way up to the sky, get really tall, stretch it out. And then start to find that little funky squat that we did on our way here. A little bend into the knees, push the booty back. And bring the hands to the ground, come to a tabletop position. If you want a down dog here, go for it. Curl the toes under, lift your hips up and back. Wherever you're at, you're gonna walk the right foot forward, placing the foot on the floor, it doesn't matter how many wiggles it takes to get there. Walk your hands up to the right side. Maybe feel the hips press a little bit more forward. Your hands can stay on the thigh or on your hips. If they feel okay, you can reach them up to the sky. And just one more breath. Bring the hands to the ground. Right leg comes back, left leg comes forward. Again, it doesn't matter how many steps it takes to get there. Walk your hands up your left leg. Maybe feel like the hips are trying to come a little bit more forward. It'll be a little wobbly. Always change where the arms are at. Just one more breath. <clears throat> Bring the hands to the ground. Bring the left knee back to meet the right. Welcome to take a cat cow here. Press your hips towards your heels for a child's pose or any kind of pausing place that feels good. You'll bring yourself up and start to make your way onto your back. So if there's anything you want on your way to lay down, go ahead and take it.
And then as you arrive on your back, take anything you need when you get here. Little weeble wobble. And then just start to cross your right leg over your left. So just finding that figure four. Your arms can be out to the side. They can rest on your body. And then with that figure four, just kind of find a little rock from side to side. So that left foot is still on the ground. You're just finding that rock. You can stay right here or start to hug your left knee into your chest. So bringing that figure four closer to the body. And you could, oh, excuse me, you could always keep your left foot on the ground. We're not here for too long, just a couple more breaths. You're holding on to the left leg, gently release it. Uncross your right leg from your left. And then cross your left ankle on top of your right knee before you hug it in. If you want to hug it in, just find kind of a little rock. Notice the weight shifting, just feel a little bit of movement. <clears throat> And then if you want, you can hug the left, the, I'm sorry, the right leg into the chest, just bringing the figure four closer to your body. It's okay if you need different things on each side. <clears throat> you can always keep that right foot on the ground. <clears throat> Last breath here. You're holding on to the right leg, gently release it. Uncross the legs. Hug both knees into the chest. Give yourself a little rock. 
and then let the knees drop over to the right. So coming into a spinal twist. So trying to keep the shoulders on the ground. You can always slide a blanket or a pillow underneath your knees or even between your knees. Or use your right hand to just kind of guide the knees towards the ground. A few rounds of breath here, still staying connected to your inhale and your exhale. Last breath here. Let your knees come all the way back to the center and drop to the other side. Your sides are going to feel different. So move whatever support you need from one side to the other. Try to keep the shoulders on the ground. Couple more rounds of breath. Start to bring your knees all the way back to the center and hug your knees in, little rock. Any final movements that your body craves this morning? <clears throat> And then you'll start to set yourself up for your final Shavasana. So you can stay on your back just as you are. You can be on your back and slide some stuff underneath your legs. If being on your back for any period of time is too much, you can roll onto your side. And you know you can always throw your legs up on a wall or on a couch. I just recommend finding some place where you can soften, where you feel like you're not doing using a lot of effort. Where you can still stay connected to your breath, but not working so hard. I'm just taking these last few minutes of class 
in complete and total gratitude for your practice this morning. Shavasana. And slowly starting to bring some awareness back into the space. Bringing some awareness back into the body. Wiggling your fingers and your toes. Rolling out wrists and ankles. And rocking your head from side to side. Stretching your arms up overhead, taking a full body stretch all the way from your fingers to your toes. 
in your own time, in your own way. Starting to hug your knees in and roll on to your side, unless you're already on your side. And when you're ready, you can start to bring yourself up into a comfortable seat. And if you're not feeling ready, it's okay to pause where you are. And keeping the focus inside. And bring your hands to your heart center, gently bow your head. Thank yourself for making it to your mat today for your practice, your energy, your breath, and most importantly, for yourself. Namaste.